Welcome to a new vlog. In this video, we are taking a closer look at the Big Clown kit I received recently. I will be installing their toolchain and building my first IoT project that will collect and show data using Grafana. I've decided to use a, a Raspberry Pi as a gateway to collect all the data and also to run a web server with Grafana so I can view and analyze the data in a modern interface. I've started by uh, taking a look at the Big Clown online documentation and let me tell you that it's very well organized. You get instructions on how to set up the toolchain on various platforms and everything works as expected. The toolchain is the part that will help you deal with the firmware, either flashing provided examples to the modules or compiling your own firmware. It's designed to work through a uh, command line interface and supports multiple operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu or any generic Linux. The toolchain has some very simple to use commands. For example, at one point I had to update the Big Clown example firmware and it was as simple as running a command that updated all the examples to the latest version and a second command to flash the new firmware. Next, you'll have to set up what they call a playground which is a set of utilities to help you interface the modules, collect data, basically help you get the most of the hardware. This includes, among other things, Mosquito, Node-RED and the Big Clown Gateway app. This can be installed on Windows, Mac, Ubuntu or Raspberry Pi. And for the Raspberry Pi, they give you a ready-made image that you can save on your SD card and you'll have everything you need ready to use after power-up no more setup needed. The playground works with the uh, USB dongle they give you in the kit and that completes the gateway that will receive messages from the nodes. In my case I had the Raspberry Pi with the ready-made SD card image so it was as simple as connecting the USB dongle, applying power and my gateway was ready to be used. When I reached the step where I was supposed to flash the example firmware I encountered my first error. It was uh, something related to the serial port driver. The Big Clown toolchain immediately uh, red redirected me to a web page with the correct steps to solve that error using a piece of software that uh, simply replaces the USB driver in use. Things like these uh, make me happy because someone was really thinking when they designed the toolchain and they really tried the tools themselves on that particular operating system and saw that there could be a problem when users do their own setup and they uh, have included that in the docu documentation. So thumbs up for that. After fixing the driver, the firmware was uploaded easily with a single command. There is one thing uh, I would like to complain about this whole process. You're supposed to put the base module into DFU mode to be able to flash the new firmware. DFU means device firmware update mode for those that are not familiar with the term. But you have to do that manually by pressing a button, keeping it pressed at startup and uh, you get no indication like a flashing LED to tell you you're in a DFU mode. So that's something they could improve. I've done this in some projects I've worked on. I had a software instruction that would jump the code execution to the bootloader section when a command was received over serial. And the bootloader would flash an LED rapidly just to let the user know that you're in DFU mode. I mean, if it's all automatic, you don't necessarily need the flashing LED, but if you require the user to press a button to put the module into DFU mode, then you need some form of visual indication that you have successfully put the board into DFU mode. If everything is automatic, then even better, and uh, like I've said, that should be easy to do in software, so that the uh, uh, toolchain itself will put the board into DFU mode right before trying to upload the new firmware. The next thing I did was to connect the Raspberry Pi into my home network and I uh, browsed through the uh, Raspberry Pi server uh, IP address on port 1880 where uh, you can find the, the node red uh, control panel. A few steps were needed here to pair the node to the gateway but the flow was already there because I used their pre-made Raspberry Pi image so 
pretty much all the hard work was already uh, implemented in there. And in just a few seconds, I was able to see my first messages in the uh, debug tab. The project example continues with uh, instructions on how to pass that data to a cloud app, but uh, I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to store the data locally on the Raspberry Pi and analyze it with Grafana. So I just uh, switched to setting up uh, Grafana instructions in the big clown documentation. All I had to do was literally copy and paste every single instruction on the Raspberry Pi terminal and it all worked perfectly on the first go. It felt like it could have been a very long a single line command to do it all. They even give you a pre-made uh, Grafana template to get all the layout right for your first dashboard. So speaking of uh, Grafana and the dashboard, here is the uh, dashboard I have. At this point everything works, data is uh, collected and I can analyze it. Connecting uh, new nodes to the network is very simple. You just have to load firmware into the nodes, just pair them inside the, the node red flow and they will start appearing in Grafana. Anything else should be easy to add or modify as you have all the building blocks available in the documentation and plenty of examples to follow. The total time it took me from start to finish where I had these uh, nice graphs of data in front of me was 20 to 30 minutes and most of that was just waiting for the computer or the Raspberry Pi to download or install the software packages. I am not aware of other uh, IoT solutions uh, out there and what kind of waiting times you need to get those up and running but for me it was amazingly easy and fast to get this one running. Thumbs up for the team and uh, how well the documentation is written. I've also taken a quick look on GitHub at the source code for the climate module example and it's pretty nice and clean. The uh, SDK is well designed, all you have to worry is to declare the type of sensor used, set up some update intervals or the logic for particular thresholds or time intervals and you're done. Everything else is handled in the background. The module will wake at uh, specified intervals. It will update the sensor values, call the uh, event handlers and go back to sleep. It should be pretty easy to modify these examples or build on top of them for your custom needs. There was also the power usage and battery life topic that I wanted to address, but I kind of failed at that topic and uh, here's why. First, I used a shunt resistor plus oscilloscope technique that I have shown in previous videos so that I can take a look at the current waveform. This will not provide any absolute measurement info because there is a lot of common noise and the resistor is not very precise or stable, but it should provide me with some info on what's going on with the module, when it's active and for how long. Here is a picture with the noise floor. So as you can see, we're picking up uh, a lot of noise just with the uh, probe in free air. And moving on, this is, uh, for example, a waveform that shows how the module wakes every five seconds to check the sensors and then sleeps in between. The firmware is written so that it wakes every five seconds for the first hour after power on, and then it switches to a 10 second interval to maximize battery life. The logic is that first you might want to play with the module during setup and you might want faster updates. Here is for example another screen capture where we can see the usual 5 seconds interval where the processor wakes up and then approximately 1 second uh, later we can see another burst which is the module transmitting data from the light sensor to the gateway because it has detected a new uh, value. It takes one second before the actual uh, TX because it takes that much to get a stable reading from the light sensor. In between the processor sleeps and waits for the sensor data to be ready. If we zoom in on one of the radio transmit events we can see it looks uh, something like this and uh, this is where I failed because measuring this kind of rapidly changing current waveform is very difficult. The current fluctuates at a rate which is certainly above the sample rate of the multimeter. The scope 
It gives an insight on how fast that waveform is changing and what kind of shape it has, but we cannot take absolute measurements from the waveform because our shunt resistor is not calibrated and we are also picking up a lot of common mode noise from the environment. The problem is also complicated by the fact that I am measuring at the battery terminals, but the battery module has a high frequency switching step up converter that will induce a high frequency variation on the current waveform. So it's pretty hard to measure that. I was able to measure the slip current at around 50 microamps and we may be able to trust that figure because there isn't much going on during the sleep period. Just the processor waking up every 10 milliseconds to check if there is any task to run. So that should have little impact on the overall waveform. But I don't have any good measurements for the part where the module is active. I have asked the Big Clown team how they are doing it and uh, they said they are working on doing measurements for all the modules and will soon publish an article on the subject. But given the batteries uh, used on the modules, the AAA batteries, the uh, very short active time and the very low consumption during sleep, I think it's safe to say the module will work for a few years on a good set of batteries, even if, if we don't have the exact uh, figures yet. I will end the video with a conclusion. The uh, documentation for this platform is very well written, easy to follow, everything just worked line after line. It took me very little time to get the project up and running, under 30 minutes and it was my first ever true IoT project that I worked on. It required uh, zero knowledge of electronics and just minimal knowledge of programming, so I think pretty much anyone can set up a project like this and collect data with little effort, just by following the instructions. That was all I had to show you in this video. Thank you for watching and uh, let me know in the comments what you think.